Oh, boys and girls, today is a very special day. This Sunday, this very Sunday, is Pentecost. Pentecost, as you may remember, is one of the three most important days of the whole church year. I mean, I know you can think of what the other two would be. Certainly one is Christmas and the other is Easter. Pentecost comes 50 days after Easter. And in our Sunday school classes, some of you will remember, we do a lot with the color red, red crayons, red markers, red construction paper. And we talk about the symbols of Pentecost. One of the main symbols, flames, tongues of fire. But we also talk about a sound, a great rushing wind. So to help you remember that story, we are going to time travel back to Jerusalem. I'm wearing this because this is the right kind of costume for me in Jerusalem. The year is 32 AD. Welcome to Jerusalem News Noonday Report, Pentecost Sunday. Andrew, son of Cooper, reporting. Today is Pentecost. The, where we celebrate the barley harvest and the receiving of the laws from God by Moses in the Sinai. Wait, we have a breaking news event of a wind and fire event in the home in East Jerusalem. We are going there now to our reporter on the scene. Hello, Andrew. I'm here in a house in East Jerusalem with Jesus followers. You may remember that Jesus was crucified by the Roman authorities earlier this year before Passover. The Jesus followers were all in the house when suddenly from heaven there came a violent wind that filled, filled the entire house. Divided tongues of fire appeared among them with a tongue resting on each of their heads. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages. Have there been any other developments? Yes. A large crowd has formed outside, attracted by the sound of the wind. Wait, Jesus' followers are going outside. They are speaking in different languages to the crowd, who seem to understand them. At Pentecost, Jerusalem is filled with people from all over the known world. The wind and fire event seems to have made the Jesus' followers able to understand, be understood by everyone in their own language. This is pretty amazing. Let's see what the crowd thinks. Some say, what does this mean? Others say, they must be drunk. Wait, a new development. One of Jesus' followers, Peter, a commercial fisherman, is about to address the crowd. Quiet, please. Let me tell you what is happening. Jesus is the one God raised from death. We are all witnesses of this. We saw him. Jesus was listed, lifted up to heaven. Now he is with God at God's right side. The Father has given the Holy Spirit to him, as he promised. So Jesus has now poured out the Holy Spirit on us. This is what you see and hear. So all the people of Israel should know this for certain. God has made Jesus to be Lord and Messiah. He is the man you nailed to the cross. What shall we do? Change your hearts. Be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, each of you. God will forgive your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This promise is for you, and for your children, and for all the people. It is for everyone the Lord our God calls to himself. Save yourselves from the evil of the people who live now. Apparently, many people have responded to this wind event and message because 3,000 people were baptized into the Jesus movement today. Thank you for that in-depth reporting. Now switching to the studio, we have Dr. Rachel of Madeline here, uh, who is an expert in divine weather events. Rachel, how can you give us insight into today's events? Thank you for having me. As an expert in divine weather events, I think there are several things to know. Pentecost commemorates when Israel was called to be, called to be God's own people. In Exodus, God appears in Sinai as thunder and smoke. Angels from the mountaintop carried God's laws on tongues to the people. Today's wind and tongues of flame could be a renewal of God's covenant and a calling of all people to be God's own. 
They also claim that the crucified Jesus has been raised up by God and this Holy Spirit comes from him. This is potentially game changing, a development to watch. So those are two rather big claims, Rachel, raising up and Holy Spirit. What do you make of those? Jesus told everyone that he would be raised up by God. So as amazing as that statement may seem, it's consistent with his message, ruach, which is also the word for wind. In Genesis, it's God's breath as a wind on the surface of the water that starts creation. So there's a deeper meaning to the wind that goes beyond just the weather of it. This could be God's signal of a new creation, Jesus being raised from the dead and the gift of the Holy Spirit to all who believe. That's a big deal. Thank you. So there you have it, a wind and fire event today in East Jerusalem, a speech that led to the expansion of the Jesus movement. Coming next, the sports report, chariot race results from Rome. This is Anders, son of Cooper, signing off for the Jerusalem News Noonday Report, Pentecost Sunday. Now that was a wonderful report from Jerusalem. And I think it helps you remember that the importance of that wind, that rushing wind, shows us that the Holy Spirit was with Jesus' followers then, thousand years ago, and has remained with us and stay with, will stay with us forever. May you have a very happy Pentecost.